Apnea on ABC Radio Melbourne. We're talking about that confidential advice that was given to Brimbank City Council late last year that said a 2013 report that the council then gave to the EPA, the Environment Protection Authority, identified a, quote, high risk to residents as well as off-site workers and the public from the former Sunshine Landfills. That area and those landfills contained radioactive materials, no less, solvents, paints, oils, acids, poisons, manure and other household and industrial waste. But for some reason, the risks posed by the landfill were deemed acceptable, in some sense, and no urgent intervention was required. We are, of course, trying to speak to the council, as you would expect. No luck there. We're trying to speak to the EPA. Uh, no luck so far, but we do hope that the EPA, as uh, the responsible corporate watchdog that it is and responsible authority there and the great work that I know that they're capable of doing, that they step up this morning and speak to you and uh, explain to the public about how that logic and that reasoning was made. John Girardi is a Brimbank resident and part of a community group with long-held concerns about this issue, and he's on the line. John, good morning. Good morning, Virginia. Were you surprised to learn that as far back as 2013, this high risk was well known? Yeah, it was a little bit of a shock to me and a little bit of a shock to those in the community that, um, that have just heard about this. People have been buying into that area and there's been no disclosure from the council about the risks involved in purchasing properties in that area. So this has just come out now and there's obviously, as you can imagine, a lot of anger in the community about this issue. Uh, a lot of anger. Has there been? I know you're part of a community group and you, you chat online and, and gather your resources there. Has there been much discussion between you in the hours since this story broke? Yeah, so I run the Brimman Community Facebook page and yes, there's been a lot of discussion on the on the Facebook page. This story was broken a little bit earlier this week by the Star newspaper. They they reported it on a, on Tuesday. And since then and then again today it's become uh, obviously a bigger story now that the age has picked up on it. So um, there's been a lot of debate, a lot of discussion and a lot of anger that the council has known about this for many years. Residents are buying into the area, buying properties that are on top of a tip and um, that they weren't notified. So, and then the council put out a, um, put out a press release, I think in uh, February 18, saying that there was a tip there but not disclosing what type of tip it was. So it wasn't just a regular tip. There's like 11 years of continuous dumping of um, toxic waste from, I think it was 1967 to 1978, that toxic waste, radioactive waste was dumped in that area. So people have been buying into this area with uh, properties that are on top of this um, former toxic waste dump. And if you look at the reports, they, they had pits, like seven large pits, some of them 21 metres deep. Um, filled with this um, toxic waste. Mm. And back in 78, they, it was leaking out. And that they knew about that it was leaking into groundwater. So they knew back then that it, that it was a problem. But, and, and, um, and, and clearly people buying into the area and residents knew about it as well. So, so you would have been asking questions and seeking reassurances back then. Were people who bought into the area, were they given assurances? Yeah, from my understanding, so despite the fact that in the own sorry, report, just answer just answer that question, then we'll get onto your understanding. Yes, Were they given yes. assurances? Yeah, from my understanding, yes, yes. So, the, were they given written assurances? Were there emails from the council saying, "Yep, yeah. all's well"? That's I'm not sure about that, Virginia. So okay. Sure. Look, if you yeah. establish that as part of your group, do let us know because I think that's a very interesting paper trail that needs to be followed up. Um, yeah. But but clearly, as we've been discussing, uh, the issue well known in the area, and I, I imagine those people buying in must have nonetheless had some misgivings, did they? Yeah, well, I'm not sure. I, I believe some of them didn't even know that there was a toxic um, toxic dump there. So some people buying into the area just didn't know. 
Now, I know the issue affects about 69 residential and six industrial properties in St Albans. It includes a community association, there's the Carrington Drive Reserve and the Sunshine Energy Park. The Western Ring Road is built over the top of the site and the train line that the state government's planning to use as the airport link runs alongside it. So it's yeah. that entire sort of large area there that I've described. That's yeah. a very complex mix of uses that now is potentially in um, an unhealthy zone. Yeah, and there's question marks about what happens from now. Is the council going to acquire those properties? Um, there's discussion about that. Um, and why have they left it till now? Well, look, the, the council says, and this is a key part of the story um, that you say was broken earlier in the week, the council says the toxic levels are very low. That's their phrase. Does that ease your concern? No, not because... Not because of the type of waste that was dumped there. And also, it seems there's mixed messages coming out of council because they're talking about the fact that they may start buying up property. So why are they saying that if, if it is um, yeah. a low risk? So so that, that bothers me, and I think that's bothering a lot of people in the community. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a fair observation. Um, we've got some calls coming in, and if you're in this area or you know anything about the story and the issue and you'd like to join in this morning, please do, one three hundred triple two seven seven four. If there's any information you'd like to share with us off air, you can always email me directly, trioli, that's T-R-I-O-L-I, dot Virginia at abc.net.au, and I'm happy to, to keep your confidence if that's the need. So are you and other Bringbank residents, John Girardi, are you now trying to get some sort of council meeting or a formal meeting with the EPA and get some answers? Well, we've got a number of people going to attend the council meeting this, uh, next week, next Tuesday, um, where there's going to be questions asked at that meeting, and I think that's going to be a that's going to be an interesting meeting because there's a lot of people in the community that want answers to what happens from here. Good to talk well, to you this morning, John. We'll stay in touch with you and see what answers they manage to give you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Virginia.